Welcome back to Transformation Tuesday. We are talking all things about celebrating freedom in life and no better than to talk about the love of the adventure of golf with Eric Lang in the house. That's me. From, uh, you got the new show. You're up to, you just got back last night from Sweden. What's up? Well, that's such a big question. <laughs> <laughs> what um, up? I mean, yeah. you, okay, so I just got back, right? We were gone for three weeks. And I guess what's up is the feeling for me now of like, y you know, when you're kind of like, pouring a drink and you're just like, there's a little bit more in there. Like, that's the feeling I have when I'm traveling is it's like, how do I get every last drop out of the trip? And that's why I look so tired. Well, I feel like you get every last drop out of life. Mm. Thank you. You've really... Cheers. Let me just chug this yeah. really quick. Let's drink to that. Drink to that. It's mean, coffee. You've mastered it. You had the film Be the Ball, Golf and Meditation, yeah. right? Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, uh, basically, I got into golf and I was sort of totally surprised by what I thought it was. I thought it was some game for other people. And then I found out that a guy like me can actually play. What do you and, mean a guy like you? Well, I'm not, if you guess, the stereotypical golfer, right? And when I tell you that I play golf, they're all like, that can't be, did I hear you wrong? Are you sure it's the game with the, the rich people play it, you know? Um, and I got into it and then I found that professional golfers all use meditation in some form or another to succeed. Because I mean, you have a very simple task, put the ball in the hole two feet away. It gets harder the more it means, you know? Uh -huh. And so meditation in some form is used for every golfer, no matter who they are, even if they deny it. They still, they may deny the name, but then they would go back and say, actually, well, I do do that. I visualize it, so, whatever. Okay, just to play devil's advocate for Please. a minute, because I'm all about it. And, you know, I, I think this is the first time on the show that I disclose that my great great grandfather invented the modern golf ball. So Which like, is the craziest so coincidence cool, ever. Right? And is. then, of course, as a doctor of identity, I'm very into meditation. So let's just break this down, though, because let's just talk about um, one of the greatest golfers that ever has lived. Do you think he golfs? Um, he meditates, Tiger Woods. Yeah. Um, so he grew up uh, the son of a Thai Buddhist. And then as well, he went on retreats with Navy SEALs doing mental training in difficult scenarios. So I would say absolutely he meditates. And Somehow, when I, I talked to him, he said he did. Yeah, it's interesting though, right? Because meditation may translate into all areas of your life and apparently kind of miss one of those areas, maybe just- Well, just you can't saying. expect perfection in all things. <laughs> well, right? golf is not a game of perfect. Even Tiger exactly. Woods will hit a miss. And kind of one of, that's one of the things that make golf so interesting is that you can go out, you can go out, and you can hit a shot that a pro would take any day. Did that, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you could actually do that. But then at the same time, they can hit a shot as bad as you might hit it as well. Yeah, the difference is the consistency, right? Exactly. Yeah, you said that. And that's that where the mindfulness yeah. and meditation comes in. Yeah, because yeah. it's sort of like a house of cards. And when you get to the top and you're about to win, it becomes, you know, a hundred times scarier. Mm -hmm. So what do you love about the game of golf? Well, I started off doing the meditation thing and that for me was the most fascinating thing. And then on a random coincidental email, the PGA Tour asked if I would make a show about whatever I wanted. How, that sounds like an overnight success. On a random email I, I get from the PGA, <laughs> go make a television show. It sounds overnight, but it's been seven years. It's been six or seven years. You were ready for it. You did the work, you meditated. I was not ready for it. I just said yes, and I figured it out as I got to the bus, you know? Amazing. But that show was sort of pitched on a whim, and I was like, oh, it's, we'll go around the world and play golf with strange people in strange places, because that's what I would do anyway without golf. I, I love to just go into weird places and talk to the guy that owns the garage with one tooth about what he thinks about life. And so that became the golf show called Adventures in Golf. And so the answer to your question, what I love about golf is, I love that it's like a patchwork quilt, right? Mm. There's, there's, there's as many games of golf as there are people that play it. And especially when you go to places like India or Japan or Iceland, everybody has a different version of it. Right, it's, such a, it's such a brilliant show. I mean, I can think of so many people that would love that show. I mean, it's such a, I mean, people love humor these days. They love adventure. Of course, golf is a huge following and more so even now that it's opened up to not just being that certain, you know, status of class or whatever, but I think it's so rad that you're doing this fun adventure. But so tell us more about the actual meditation. How do you bring that? How does that, would you do that off the course, on the course? Obviously all of life is a meditation, but well, there's that. two ways of talking about the meditation. One is we did an experiment with 50 golfers where we taught them all to meditate five days a week, 30 minutes a day, and uh, for three months. And I kind of came up with this meditation based on Buddhism, Tony Robbins, anyone I could think of. And it's sort of a two-part thing where you spend 15 minutes just counting your breaths, and then you spend 15 minutes telling yourself how great you are at golf. 
In some, <laughs> in some percentage. No, but it's like laws of attraction. Yeah, you know? for sure. I'm going to start telling myself how great I am at life. You are. You're great at it. I mean, look great. at you. You're doing great. Everything's fine. You're doing great. <laughs> I would love to take a look at some of the great episodes. Okay, good. You've had an adventurous move. Shot. Get in the hole! Yeah! Yeah! This is a, uh, it's a chipper, and it's clearly a left and right club. It goes both ways. All right. That was pretty good. That was my best shot of the day. I should enjoy this because this will probably never happen again. 48 yards between about 15 trees. I hit a tree, but I, it's it. probably actually good because there are so many trees. You'd have to be bad to not hit a tree. Man with the gun. Hey, there you go. Good job, guys. Team. All right. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. You'll notice there's no hugging. And the hole in one man. I enjoyed naked golf so much that I decided to stick around and enjoy some of the other naked activities. Does being nude all the time detract from that sensual moment of disrobing? No. It's because the eye contact and the emotions that go between the two people don't have anything to do with whether you have clothes on or off. Have you noticed where all the sweat kind of tends to go towards? Yeah, it's on, the, on, the on the deck. It's kind of, it's a little <laughs> interesting. I never really experienced that before. Best nudist joke. Yeah, best joke. I guess it would have to be a really, really old one. And the guy that can carry um, two cups of coffee and 13 donuts without a tray. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. At Cypress Cove, there is nothing you can't do naked. All right, folks, next up we have Eric. Come on up, Eric. Give us a nice Take this job and show it. I ain't working here no more. A woman done left. I was working for you better not try to stand in my way Stop walking out of the door Take this job and shove it I ain't working here no more Thank you, Sergeant Cole All right, still there, all wow. naked. All right, all naked. Good morning, Los Angeles. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Talk that about freedom. Wow. Wow. I don't think you have any fun. I try not to. I try not to. Yeah, because it can, you know, you, then you'll never come home. You know. Wow. Whose idea was it for that episode? That was mine. That was mine. Um, and I remember in the episode, there's a moment where my producer is telling me. This was your idea. You have to get naked right now. And I was like, I really don't want to. I really don't want to. And then the funny thing is that when I did it, it actually, 20 seconds later, I was like, this is great. <laughs> really? And I tried to get my crew to get naked, but they declined. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about liberation, right? Yeah, very liberating. It was very, Fourth of July, very free. Right? I very liberated free. my... You know, <laughs> yes, your whole self. My fireworks. Your physical self. <laughs> <laughs> Two cups of coffee and 13 donuts. Well, That's interesting, all I gotta say. I think it's an interesting point, too, and there's a, I think there's an interesting takeaway. Possibly, okay. <laughs> which is that you know, golf is such a game of vulnerability, right? Right. Yeah. And one of the things that I know, I work with um, a lot of professional golfers. Actually, probably more golfers than I do with almost any other sport. Really? Yes. And the interesting thing about it is that it's a game where you become increasingly lost in your own thoughts about yourself, yeah, about what you're doing, what you could have done better. You know, even more so than a game like basketball or baseball or football, because sometimes the action itself distracts you from all of this self-referent thought. Mm. Totally. You know what I mean? So part of that getting naked thing, I would imagine, is allowing people to become more vulnerable and let go of all these thoughts and ideas they have about their body and what other people are thinking right. about what they're doing. Absolutely. Okay. Do I need to comment? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I was trying to tee it up for you. <laughs> but it, maybe it was just for the nakedness. Well, I, I haven't played golf Nudity. naked since, yeah. but I do know that in a way, all of these episodes have become situations like that for me as sort of like, uh, you know when you look at your passport and you see it's full? You feel good. Yeah. I don't know why. 
Or when someone says, have you been somewhere? And you say, yeah, I've been there. And so, yeah, it's kind of like that. Like, I, I, I think for me, it was more the, the mental hump, if you will, of getting, of, be, of just doing what I didn't want to do. Yeah. Right? Of, of trying something I didn't want to try or was afraid to, I think. That's probably maybe like what you're saying. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about season three. Where are you going? Season three is really exciting for Adventures in Golf because it's it's really going to be the culmination of what we learned from the first two seasons of what makes a good show, how to shoot it, how to do it. And we've got this really wonderful ten episodes of, man, Iceland. Uh, we, we went to Hawaii. We, one of my favorite episodes from season three is going to be uh, veteran golfers, like guys, that, men and women who served in the military who use golf as a way to socialize and rehabilitate after traumatic experiences. And so they were all on Hawaii. We played some beautiful golf together. And we watched these, uh, you know, it ended up being mostly men, but there were women as well. We watched them sort of um, have a group within a group, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, we went to see a uh, Japanese uh, artisanal club maker in his little tiny village in Japan that took like 28 days to get to. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of like, the closest thing you get to to Mr. Miyagi gets in at 5 a.m. every morning and grinds the club. So, wow. yeah, we just went all over the world. Nice. So, Eric, I have a question for you. Um, one of my obsessions of, in life is discovering people's stories of awakening. Mm -hmm. And I know, obviously, if you're into meditation, you've gone through this. <clears throat> Tell me a little bit about what got you there and your experience of your personal awakening. Sure. Well, I would... Thank you for the, uh, the the idea that I might be getting close to that, but I don't know. I mean, for, for me, where I look at it in my daily life today about like waking up, if, if I'm a meditator, mm -hmm. is uh, I've tried to like, you know, you got a Ouija board, you know what I'm talking about, and it like spells out a word, or you got the eight ball that gives you an answer. Yeah. Well, I believe that we actually all have that like right inside, and I think in a way that listening to that and just going with it immediately is kind of what makes Adventures in Golf so good because you know we could come across somebody and easily talk ourselves out of interviewing them or talk ourselves out of changing the plan slightly or even majorly. Like some of the greatest episodes, we had no plan on going to on Sunday night at 10 p.m. Monday morning at 5 a.m. we were on a flight to some random island in Scotland or uh, Nepal. Mm -hmm. Those are two good examples. So listening to that instinct for me is what meditation has kind of cleared away the clutter of like, well, it's going to be expensive, or well, the client's going to say no, or well, what if they're closed? Mm. Yeah. And so listening to that, just being like, no, can I curse? I was going to say, <laughs> and no, screw it, we're going to go. Yeah. yeah. That that for me has been the biggest. I love that example. What would you say? So I'm a firm believer that like you know, sort of like what we do anywhere is what we do, or what we do anywhere is what we do everywhere, kind of you know. And um, I know that your meditation practice has informed your golf. What has golf taught you about life? Oh. Can we just cut the show right yeah. there? <laughs> they, they, people live their lives trying to figure that out, you know? And I think that's, you know, golf is kind of one of these, like, insanely difficult things that we go, come to without any understanding of why. And so to actually be able to answer that question is something I, most golfers aspire to, right? And, and for me, oh, man, I mean, I guess the best example is to, oh, there's so many. Patience is a big one, right? Because you learn that you can hit a good shot and have a bad result, and that's still fair. That's still part of the game. But the biggest one is uh, eight years ago, before the show started and before the movie started, I was playing golf in L.A., and I saw a guy in front of me wearing a flat-brimmed hat, big cargo shorts, and an oversized shirt. And I was like, oh, who is this guy? He's playing really slow. And I judged him immediately. Just as I would be judged <laughs> probably, you know, with my hair. Yeah. And I finally walked up to him and I realized that we already knew each other and we were friends. Mm. And I pulled out my camera when I went back and played with him a week later and I talked to him all about life and golf and he'd gotten sober. He was a crystal meth addict and he used golf to like rehabilitate himself. Sadly, he died years later like in a weird accident and I still have this piece of footage of him that I'm not sure how to use yet. But really it's the idea that we might think that a group of golfers have something in common, but if we can expand that further, we're actually all on the same planet. And what do we have in common there? It's we sort of look at our differences all the time, and mm -hmm. you know, even with the person that's the most opposite from us, we have something in common. And in a lot of ways, I think that's what I hope Adventures in Golf can bring to someone who might be relatively close-minded. Because if you're going to look at stereotypes, golfers tend to be that way, mm -hmm. just like all humans. But mm -hmm. if we can just create a little more openness there, wow, I love that. Wow, I love all that. one family. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your light and your talent and taking us all over the world with your adventures. I'm so excited for season three. Me right? too. So I'm where can excited. people follow you? Uh, well, my Instagram is where I'm most active. It's at Eric Anders Lang. Does it just show up right here? Somewhere? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Eric Anders Lang with a K. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, and then the show is on YouTube. You can check it out on Scratch TV. If you just type in Adventures in Golf, it comes up. 
I think if you type in golf Eric with a K, it might come up. Mm. We'll try, try Adventures it. in try Golf it. first. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Thank so you. fun. So fun. Love your work. Love your work. So Thank adventurous. You. Stay tuned, you guys. We're going to be right back.